Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head back to one of my favourite Japanese craft breweries and this is one that really just piqued my interest and I had to get this when I saw it in a Koji shop, liquor shop, Asahiya. Make sure you check out the link to his Facebook page in the description below. But for this one we are going to go back to Izakadoya once again and we're having a taste of what, if I am not mistaken, is my first kind of New England uh, IPA from Japan. So for this one, we're going to have a taste of the Yuzu no Ka, which is a New England IPA coming in at 8% uh, ABV. This one is brewed using a London ale yeast strain and uh, I think it also has Yuzu added to it as well. So it should be a very, very interesting beer. If you've watched my channel before and you've watched my Japanese reviews before, you will know that I really rate these... Um, I really rate these uh, Izakadoya beers pretty highly, you know, these guys are definitely one of the best craft breweries that you're going to come across in Japan, but there has been a little bit of a boom here in the last two years or so, there's a lot of li different little breweries kind of popping up now which are doing some very, very interesting stuff. The main problem with Japan, of course, is the distribution network. For a country that is very, very advanced, their distribution um, network just does not match that, actually. It's, it's really quite strange, you, you know, you get some really beautiful sakes and beers and stuff like that that in certain uh, in certain little villages and stuff but then they never ever make it outside of that which is a really terrible shame because the Japanese are very very good when it comes to you know food and uh, beer and wines and sakes and stuff like this they really produce some very very interesting stuff but um, yeah so as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Isacadia before no doubt there will be some more in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Japanese beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Isakadoya then. So Isakadoya, as I've mentioned to you before, are from Isa City in Mie Prefecture, which is in the Kansai region of Japan. It's really not that far away from Osaka, actually. It's somewhere that I do need to go and visit. But this city is dubbed the holy city of the Shinto religion and it's home to over 200 Shinto shrines. The main one, of course, is the Isa Grand Shrine and that's that's, I think, the, you know, the main one. Um, in terms of all of Japan. But the city gets around 5 million visitors per year, but um, Ise is just a relatively small city of about 130,000 people. But the brewery was founded back in 1997 and it's owned by Narihiro Suzuki, who previously studied microbiology at university. He's a PhD graduate, actually, from Mie University. But he runs the company with his wife, Chika Suzuki, and she does a lot of the work in the company's restaurants and things like that as well. But the root of the Suzuki family's business actually goes back to 1575 when his family started the Kadoya Cafe with the aim of selling the Kinakomachi tea to the to the Isa pilgrims. But the full company name is actually Nikanajayo Michi Kadoya Honten if you want to give it its full thing. You know a lot of these little breweries in Japan do have big parent companies like that although this is still quite a small family run business but this is apparently one of the longest running companies in Japan. It dates away back to like the 16th century or something like this. But in in the early days, the company really struggled when the Jibiru boom kind of fell, and this kept what kept the company going was actually the idea to produce some souvenir beers, which are released under the name Sinto, and this was what kept the company going. And it was only in about 2010 that the Isakadoya beers started to perform better than the Sinto beers. And Narihiro Suzuki, I should mention as well, is the 21st generation of his family to run this company, which I think is pretty damn impressive. But the brewmaster is uh, Masakazu Nakanishi who joined the company in 1997 after working an office job. He'd studied fermentation in high school during his agriculture classes and the brewery apparently were looking for a brewer when his work contract finished so it really was just a perfect fit. But he later became the brewmaster in 1999 and another instrumental man in the brewery is also Yoshihiro Matsuoka who is the restaurant manager and the label designer as well and he's known as the walking beer dictionary simply because he's just got a ridiculous knowledge of 
of different things. But this brewery import various hops and uh, malts from across the world and they use water from the local Miyagawa River which is filtered through charcoal microfilters and they're apparently very thorough in their quality control as well and they've won many many different awards for their uh, for their beer to date. But they own two restaurants, this is the Biagura which is their on-site restaurant and they also have the Isakaduya Kaikumayatin as well which is very good but they've got a range of core beers, various seasonal beers and they also produce cider, soy sauce, tamari, miso and of course the Kinako Machi as well and they very recently just opened up a new brewery as well. I think it was back in August of 2018 that they've just opened up uh, one of their, their, their new brewery which looks very shiny and very fancy and of course it increases their capacity quite considerably as well so you may well start to see these Isakadoya beers being exported a little bit more so it's very exciting times at the moment for the, the Japanese craft beers so if you do get the chance to try some of these beers I really recommend that you do because Isakadoya are probably one of the most experimental craft breweries that you're going to find in Japan and they use a lot of kind of unique um, Japanese ingredients too which is, is uh, very very cool so yeah have a go at some of these beers if you get the chance but that's all you really need to know about Isakadoya for the moment if you want to learn a little bit more do check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and things like that and that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on over there but yeah Let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork again there. You can see there is the lovely Isakadoya symbol, just making sure the camera is focused on that for you. Um, I think, you know, the representation of this it is a little bit, it is kind of a reference obviously to the, the connection with the Shinto religion. Shinto is very, very interesting actually. It's uh, a native religion to Japan and it dates back thousands of years. But from what I understand, basically the idea is take wisdom from the ancestors and uh, respect nature. You know, it's, it's actually a very nice uh, religion compared to some of them. But, uh, but yeah, you know, really interesting looking beer. This uh, You're not going to see this because this, of course, has the best buy date on it, but that um, same badge is on the bottle cap of this one. But this one's a limited edition brew, yuzu flavoured New England IPA at 8% ABV. So without further ado, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste and then. I'm really looking forward to this, actually. Yeah, nice little bit of smoke on the opening and we'll get it out and into the glass. There we go. So yeah, in terms of appearance then, this one is, you know, pretty much what you would expect from a New England IPA. It's poured a lovely, kind of hazy, I would say this one's more of a yellow colour than an orange. I think that's fair to say that this one is kind of a bright yellow. I'm looking at the camera on, on the camera control and wondering if that's actually showing up for you guys properly, but this one is definitely more of a nice kind of yellow colour um, than um, an, a kind of orange which you can get from some of these New England IPAs. There's a solid half finger of a frothy white head on this one. I would say at the same time it does have a little bit of a cream tinge to it, so I think a, a yeah, cream white head to this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see this beer is not really transparent. It's definitely got that kind of haze craze sort of thing to it. But um, yeah, so let's have a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one. Oh, now. That smells absolutely beautiful. Straight away with this beer, you get the yuzu out of it. And I would wonder if they've put a little bit of soriachi ace or something here. I always, you know, I love the Japanese, um, the Japanese grown soriachi ace. Um, but yeah, this one is, um, this is a really beautiful aroma in this beer. Straight away you've got these nice, um, these nice yuzu notes coming out. It's like a very kind of sharp tangerine, but it's also got a kind of, um, almost lemon and quite lemon sharpness to it and a little bit of a lime quality as well. Like, yuzu is a very, very kind of distinctive fruit, if you like. Underneath that though, you get a lot of nice kind of grassy and floral aromaticity out of this one. Lovely kind of oaty creaminess coming out of the aroma too and definitely some nice kind of wheaty white bread. Maybe a little bit of a, a kind of biscuity note to this one as well in fairness. But yeah, the, the yuzu in this one really complements the floral qualities and the grassiness just beautifully. It smells, the thing you'll notice with this one straight away is that it smells very very fresh. One of the things I'm wondering about this as well actually is that it's um, 
you know, it's 8%, so it could really be dubbed a double IPA, to be honest with you, rather than um, than a single IPA. And I've always said, when it comes to these New England IPAs, I think about, you know, 8.5% is the limit of what you can do with the New England IPAs before you've got to add a little bit of caramel to cover up the booze and things like that. So this is, this is always an interesting thing. I have found a couple of beers that have proved me wrong on that point that are New England IPAs, but I'd be very curious just to see how this one turns out. One of the ones I've had recently, of course, was from Uchu Brewing, and that was definitely a kind of a, a New England style IPA, but it, it was very, very nicely done, and it was, I think that was 10% that one, if I'm remembering correctly, um, the Aldebaran or something, I think, yeah, Aldebaran it was called, and that was a beautiful, beautiful beer, but this looks absolutely lovely, it smells very, very fresh, as I say, it, it has pretty much everything you would expect in terms of a, a New England IPA's aroma. But yeah, it really is just um, very, very nicely done. So as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it because that's always half the experience when it comes to craft beers and whiskies and sakes and things like this. But we are going to have a taste of this one now. So yeah, this one, just to make sure I've got the name right, is the Yuzu no Ka um, New England IPA, 8% ABV from Izakadia in Iza City, the home of Shinto in Mia Prefecture here in Japan. Let's get stuck in. Thank you once again to Koji at Liquor Shop Asahiya for the recommendation. Slanja, Skull, Kampai. Oh. Yeah. Straight away, it's a thumbs up for this beer. You know, I'm not surprised. Izakado, yeah. As I said, these guys are one of the, you know, they're one of the, the big hitters in Japan when it comes to the, the craft beer scene. And, you know, this is just another lovely, lovely beer. I was really, I was looking forward to this one, and it certainly hasn't let me down. I love trying beers that have yuzu in them. But, yeah, this is just really nice. I mean... The yuzu is definitely coming out in the aftertaste, and it actually suits the New England style very, very well. This is the first New England IPA with yuzu that I've had, and I think the other ones that I've had have been West Coast IPAs rather than um, <clears throat> rather than New England ones. But the yuzu just suits this style very, very well. You know, you can even tell with this one, yuzu is quite a punchy flavour, if you like. But you can tell with this beer, um, and I think Isakado, you were one of the first ones in Japan to start producing these hazy IPAs. You can tell with this beer that there's a very solid kind of base to this one, and then the yuzu is just complementing that very, very nicely. So if you do get the chance to try this one, I highly recommend that you do. It's actually a bit of a shame <clears throat> with these Isakado beers because some of them are very very good but they are just limited editions and unfortunately you won't uh, you won't find them again it really is a terrible shame that's the one downside to the the Isakadoya brewery but let's try and break this the flavor of this one down a little bit but yeah so <clears throat> center your palate then with this one you can feel a really nice wheaty white bready malt base that just blankets the middle of your tongue on top of that you're definitely getting a nice kind of um, oaty creaminess out of this beer and there's a little bit of a there's definitely a little bit of a kind of biscuity sweetness to this one I'm actually finding the malt base of this one it's got a nice creaminess to it but the wheat the wheaty qualities are very smooth and sweet the oats are almost a little bit sweet as well and then it's got the biscuit in there I'm finding that the way this malt base comes across is the sweetness of it is actually really nice. I like how everything's kind of going together with this one. <coughs> yeah. This is just a beautiful, beautiful beer. Um, you know, as I say, try this one if you get the chance. On the hoppy side of things, um, in the back corners of the palate, there's a little tiny bit of earthiness there, but nothing you know nothing out of the ordinary when you come further forward along the sides of your palate there you can feel that just smooth out a little bit and it gradually pushes its way out a little bit more to be a little bit more slightly spicy and floral and aromatic and round the front curve of the palate of course you've got a nice kind of um 
you've got a nice lighter kind of grassy hoppiness to the beer and then behind the front curve of the palate of course that's where you get these nice juicy fruity esters that are coming from the hops one of the things that's also worth noting about uh, these IPAs, when you add fruit to the brew, um, what always happens is that you get the juicy qualities around the front edge of your tongue and that kind of suppresses a little bit of the IBUs that you're going to get out of the beer. And you can definitely feel that nice yuzu quality. The yuzu for me is coming out a little bit later in the flavour. It's got more of a punch into the aftertaste. It, when you first take this beer in, I think it's more about the OT kind of creaminess and stuff like that. But really in the aftertaste, it's the yuzu that starts to take the, the initiative. You know, the, the way the yuzu comes out in this one is very, very nice. It's, as I say, this, this, you know, I'd probably go as far as saying this is my favourite beer that I've had so far from uh, from Isakadu and to me again that that's the one downside to the the to these beers is I'll probably never drink this one again because they only you know they only do it as a kind of one off brew. They do a lot of beers like that but it's it's cool, it's experimentation. That's what craft beer is all about. But yeah you can definitely feel these lovely yuzu flavours kinda of around the front edge of the tongue and they mix very well with the kind of grassy side of the beer and a little bit with the floral qualities as well. Um but yeah so with this one, you really have a very nice kind of, um, behind the front curve of the palate, you've definitely got a little bit of a kind of lemony sort of thing to this one. I would wonder, you know, I think it might be Soriachi Ace that's in here, but at the same time, it could be a little bit of Centennial or something like that. I think the Centennial um, Hop is one that would complement this really nicely, or um, and I think there might be a little bit of Equinor or something too, because the beer definitely has a little bit of that almost limey quality as well. And as I said to you, I've always found that the yuzu is almost like a very sharp kind of mandarin, but just with an element of um, lemony and, and kind of limey citrus to it as well. It's a very it's a very unique fruit. You just need to try it your, uh, for yourself and see what you think. But the I wouldn't be surprised if they've used a little bit of centennial and equinot in this one just to kind of, um, you know, to, to balance that out. Because I think those two hops would really complement the yuzus very, very nicely. So... Yeah, I'd be very curious to know about that, but again, you've also got the Japanese-grown Soriachi Ace, which is another beautiful hop, but very hard to come by these days, actually, and home brewing, of course, in Japan is uh, it's basically illegal, actually, and um, there's a lot of complex laws um, that kind of prevent people from brewing their beer. It basically favours the big corporate companies here in Japan, um, but yeah, it's a lovely beer this one you know if you like yuzu and you like the new england ipas this to me you know it just puts the things together very very nicely i think that's a good way to sum up this one but you know i've never had a bad beer from isakado yeah they're always doing some very very interesting stuff and experiment with new hops and different fruits and different styles and all of these kind of things so have a go at some of the beers from this brewery they they really are very very good um in terms of the mouth feel of this one then um, I would say, you know, it's a mid-bodied beer. The carbonation is, is smooth. You know, it does have an element of that Japanese, typical Japanese drinkability to, to it. It does have a little bit of a prickle from the carbonation. The mouthfeel overall is a little bit kind of creamy. Um, I would say... <sighs> The, the IBUs in this one is, yeah, it's about 30, you know, between 20 and 30, which is standard for this uh, for this style. It's quite smooth. The malt base, I think, is a little bit sweeter in this one compared to some of the other uh, New England IPAs that I've had, but it really complements the yuzu flavours as well, like I said. And you've got this nice, juicy, fruity note to the, the beer as well, which I think is, uh, is very, very nice. So, yeah, if you get the chance to try this one, I highly, highly recommend that you do. This is a beautiful, beautiful beer. And I would go as far as saying this is the best one that I've had from Isakadoya so far. They've done a really good job of this one. If you like Yuzu's, if you like the New England IPAs, you know, this is the perfect combination. So have a go at it for yourself and uh, and see what you think. This one's been one of the best what, Japanese... I think I would even go as far as saying this is one of the best Japanese beers that I've uh, reviewed so far. It just really hits the spot for me. But as I always say, beer is subjective. You guys might disagree with that statement of, of this one being one of the best Japanese beers over the last little while but yeah lovely lovely beer this one and i've certainly enjoyed reviewing it for you so i hope you guys have enjoyed my take so yeah until the next time um please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from isakado yeah as well i'm sure i'll return to these guys in the fairly near future thank you again for watching and i will catch you guys very soon this one was the yuzu no ka new england ipa coming in at eight percent abv from isakado yeah in uh, Isa in Mia Prefecture, 
here in Japan. A lovely, lovely beer this, and I've really enjoyed this one. So until the next time, Slanja just now, Skull and Kampai. Make sure you try some of these Isit Kadoya beers. Skull.